without transcending the modes, there will always be the influence of the tamagun, rajagun. So this is the point here. So, uh, Prabhupada was on television one time in America and he was asked, the interviewer asked him, how would we recognize one of these devotees? And Prabhupada said, he would be a perfect gentleman. So, this point is again made here. The one who is actually a devotee will cultivate the good qualities. And certainly, everyone appreciating Srila Prabhupada in that way. They saw him as a very nice person, very gentlemanly. So, this is what is expected from devotee. If devotees behave badly, then it comes very bad on the Krishna consciousness movement. Uh, for example, there was uh, one new there were some two new devotees. They were many, uh, and they were they came to Krishna consciousness. But uh, the person living next door was surprised because she, she they could hear them arguing a lot. The husband and wife were arguing. And they were surprised, you know, they got so, they, she said the, the arguments were so bad, you know, very passionate, a lot of uh, influence, they had bad words and almost like violence, you know, with each other. And she was surprised that how is it these people could be devotees, you know, that how is it they're practicing Krishna consciousness and they behave like this. And so, very important for us that we understand that we represent Srila Prabhupada and the Lord Chaitanya's movement and we have to cultivate the good qualities. Srila Prabhupada's purport continues, Brahma confirms herein, herewith, that only persons who have developed the desirable qualities can enter into the kingdom of God. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the devotees' desirable qualities are described to be 26 in number. They are stated as follows. He is very kind. He does not quarrel with anyone. He accepts Krishna consciousness as the highest goal of life. He is equal to everyone. No one can find fault in his character. He is magnanimous, mild, and always clean internally and externally. He does not profess to possess anything in this material world. He is a benefactor to all living entities. He is peaceful and is a soul completely surrendered to Krishna. He has no material desires to be fulfilled. He is meek and humble, always steady, and has conquered the sensual activities. He does not eat more than required to maintain the body and soul together. He is never mad after material identity. He is respectful to all others and does not demand respect for himself. He is very grave and very compassionate and very friendly. He is poetic. He is expert in all activities and he is silent in nonsense. Similarly, in Srimad Bhagavatam, 3rd Canto, 25th chapter, verse 21, the qualifications of a saintly person are mentioned. It, it, it is said there that a saintly person, eligible to enter into the kingdom of God, is very tolerant and very kind to all living entities. He is not partial. He is kind both to human beings and to animals. He is not such a fool that he will not that he will kill a goat, Narayan, he, that he will kill a goat Narayan to feed a human Narayan, or Daridra Narayan. He is very kind to all living entities, therefore he has no enemy. He is very peaceful. These are the qualities of persons who are eligible to enter into the kingdom of God. That such a person gradually becomes liberated and enters the kingdom of God is confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam, 5th canto, 5th chapter, verse 2. The Srimad Bhagavatam, 2nd canto, 3rd chapter, verse 24, also states that if a person 
does not cry or exhibit bodily change after chanting the holy name of the Lord without offense, it is to be understood that he is hard-hearted and that therefore his heart does not change even after he chants the holy name of the Lord. Hare Krishna. These bodily changes can take place due to ecstasy when we offenselessly chant the holy names of God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Srila Prabhupada is referring first of all to the verse from Kapila Shiksha. Um, Tatikshiva Parunikam Surida Sarvadana Shatrava Shantaha Sadhava Sadhu Bhushana. Yeah, the ornaments of the sadhu. Sadhu Bhushana. Ornaments of the sadhu. Tatikshiva tolerant. Karunika merciful. Just as Lord Chaitanya teaches us also in Shikshastikam that we should be humble and tolerant like the tree, offer respects to others and not expect respects for ourselves. And then Lord Chaitanya said, then we can constantly chant the holy name. So here also Prabhupada is saying, by cultivating these qualities, the ornaments of the sadhu become qualified to go back to Godhead. And then Prabhupada refers to other verses and it comes to this verse in the second canto where it says the, that if we, we do not feel ecstasy and trembling in the body and hair standing on end, when we chant the holy name, then our heart must be steel framed or heart, we must be hard hearted. So it's expected that in the course of practicing devotional service based on chanting the holy name, that our heart will melt, there will be the change in heart, that change in heart that we will cultivate that uh, transcendental ecstasy, the attachment for, for the Lord. Of course that comes at the bhava stage, which is uh, described also in Shikshastikam. Lord Chaitanya talks about that, how there be trembling in the body, tears flowing from the eyes like rain. So these are all symptoms of bhava, ecstatic love for the Lord. Devotional service is performed on three levels. There is devotional service in practice, devotional service in ecstasy, and devotional service in love of God. Or sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti, and prema bhakti. Now one who is doing sadhana bhakti, he may not be feeling bhava, but it does not mean that he is not a pure devotee. They, it can also be, they can also be pure devotees. Sometimes uh, people think that unless you're displaying these ecstatic symptoms that you have not reached the higher stages of devotional service. But in the Nectar of Instruction, Srila Prabhupada writes that one who is always thinking how to spread the Krishna Consciousness Movement and how to expand the Sankirtan Movement, then that person is understood to be a... a, a pure devotee, yet he has reached the, the highest stage of Krishna consciousness. So we have to understand uh, the, the, these symptoms of bhava, they're listed in the nectar of devotion. It's described that one who has reached the stage of bhava, that he is very careful in utilizing time. He does not waste a fraction of a second, he's using every moment for the service of Krishna. And he's strongly attached to the service of the Lord. He's very attached to the holy places. And he uh, is very careful to avoid the association of non-devotees. Like this, these are all different qualities of a devotee. We do not try separately to cultivate these qualities. We simply have to engage in the process of Krishna consciousness. We have our sadhana, we have our regular practices. If we practice like this every morning, waking up early, having Mongol arti, worshipping Tosi, chanting japa, hearing scriptures, then gradually, naturally, we will come to the higher stages of Krishna consciousness. We will develop a deeper and deeper attachment 
for, for these activities. And all the good qualities come about. We see the example of Magrari the hunter, that he was killing animals in the most cruel way, torturing them and leaving them to die a slow death. But then he got the mercy of Narada Muni, and he became a devotee. And after that, he would not even step on little insects. Narada Muni didn't tell him, don't do this, don't do that. He just told him, chant. Do this chanting. Chant the holy name of Krishna. And by chanting the Krishna's name, then we, we automatically, naturally, we start to feel these activities are wrong, I have to change, I have to give up these bad habits. It naturally comes about in the course of Krishna consciousness. Uh, I remember the, some people, I was preaching, I was meeting some people from the business community in the Philippines and uh, they were going to one man and he was telling them you don't have to leave meat meat will leave you <laughs> but uh, after many years we found they were they still hadn't left meat you know? they, they never ever did leave meat <laughs> so the, it does require some attention on our own part it's not that you know, we can think, oh, I, I can continue eating meat and gradually meat will just go away. <laughs> no, we do have to have some level, some basic standards as devotees. That's why Srila Prabhupada gives us a minimum standard, four regulated principles. And if we practice these four principles, then the other good qualities come about. But if we're not following the four principles, then it can be difficult. Then it's difficult. Sometimes people, we encourage people to chant. Okay, you, you're not following the four principles, but chant. You can still chant. And if you keep chanting, then we expect that they will start to follow the four principles. And Either they will start to follow the four principles, or they will stop chanting Hare Krishna, right? <laughs> One or the other. Either the, 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 you know, the sinful activities will control them, or the chanting of Hare Krishna will purify them. So like that. <laughs> there is some standards there, there. And one should come quickly, in fact, to the standard of four regulated principles. I'll just read a little more. How's it? What's the time? We are five minutes. Five minutes. Oh well, maybe we'll take any any comments or questions. Maybe. He has read that uh, such a person in a devotee, nobody can find any fault. And we also hear in the case of like Shad Goswami, nobody could find fault, even the bad people would appreciate them. But at the same time, we also hear of cases that even the Lord is not spared of finding fault, like people found fault with Ram, or Krishna, or so many other devotees. How do we reconcile this uh, two things? People find faults with Lord Ram? Yes. Some people find oh, fault even yeah. with the Lord, even uh -huh. with nice devotees. But on one hand, we read that with good devotees, nobody can find any fault. Well, yeah, well, no civilized person can find fault with the devotees. <laughs> 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 these people who find fault, these are not really the, the civilized people. You know? they're, they're the Dvipada Pashus. You know? <laughs> so they find fault, yeah. People found fault. People did criticize even Srila Prabhupada. You know, we saw sometimes people were critical of Prabhupada. Uh, but a devotee is tolerant of, of these things. It's, we cannot expect to please everyone. That's a fact, isn't it? You know that story about the man, the, the father and the son and the horse? Yes. And the <laughs> They were, kept, uh, they were both riding on the horse, people criticized them. They were both walking, people criticized them. The father sat on the horse, the son walked, people criticized them. Whatever they did, people criticized You can't please everyone. Our duty is not to please everyone. Our business is to please Krishna. 
What does Krishna want? Our, our business is to please Krishna and Krishna's representatives. Yeah, we cannot expect you're going to please everyone. We know we, we got complaints, whatever we do. You go for kirtan in the street, people criticize. So much noise, you're disturbing me. You go for selling books, they'll criticize you. you why are you bothering me? Just, you, know, you have to expect that people, not everyone will accept. Not everybody is going to appreciate what you're doing. It's like Krishna told the gopis. Krishna said, I cannot repay you. He said, you have to be ha satisfied yourself in what you're doing for me. And so it's like that. We cannot expect that everybody will ple be pleased and appreciate what we do. But we should be convinced ourselves that what we're doing was what pleased Krishna and what was the order of the spiritual teachers and be satisfied in that way. Yeah, we hear sometimes criticisms, people criticize Lord Ram and so on, they criticize Prabhupada and so on. But we, we just, we don't hear this. We don't, we don't want to hear that, these kind of blasphemers. These things do go on, but cannot avoid this material world. But a devotee uh, is careful where we associate and who we hear from. If somebody's speaking in this way, we don't want to hear. Just go away. Leave that place. Okay, thank you very much. So thank you very much. After this we'll do the uh, after Maharaj, we'll do the Prabhupada.